Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can turn a list section into a horizontal timeline in your Squarespace website. We're going to use a super cool code trick called a clip path. That's clip path. We're going to use that to change the shape of the card for a list item so it looks like this or looks like this. Now I've got the codes for both of those options listed in the description below, but let's go ahead and hop into Squarespace because I'd love to show you how it works and what are the parts that you're going to want to change to make it look amazing on your own website. We have a few adjustments to make to the actual padding inside that list section. So let's go ahead and hop into Squarespace and get started. So here we are in my Squarespace site. I've created a list section and in this list section, I've actually listed exciting Squarespace releases and the month and year that they came out. I thought that would be a fun piece of content to use for this tutorial. Now, what we're going to do is create arrow shapes and also create the line with pointing cards. However, we're going to want to change the settings of the items inside this list section so that the padding and sizes look better for each different design. So I'm going to walk you through each one of these. You're going to want to make some changes, but both of these are CSS codes. So I'm going to navigate to design and then scroll down to custom CSS right here. This is where we're going to paste the code. I'm going to go ahead and start with this first one. All this first one is doing is creating an arrow shape. It's taking the list item and it's giving it this polygon clip path, which is going to change it from a square into an arrow. So I'm just going to paste that right here and check it out. We now have the arrow design, but pay close attention here. My font's getting cut off a little bit. The actual title and description doesn't really line up very well with the arrows. So I'm going to select save and we're going to hop into edit mode. It'll expand and look a little bit different there, but I still didn't like how that got cut off. So what we need to do is select edit content and scroll down here to size and space. In size and space, we can change the width of the content. I'm going to select medium and I'm going to make sure it's placed over on the left. If it's placed in the center, it might get too close to the edge of the arrow on smaller screens. Placed to the right, it will definitely get cut off if I have any titles that are very tall at the top there, descriptions that are long. So I'm going to select content with medium and all the way to the left. So one last time, I'm in edit mode. I'll select edit content, scrolling down to size and space. I want to select content with medium and the placement on the far left. Now we'll go ahead and select save. And since we're no longer in full screen edit mode here, my content's going to resize a little bit. And if we scroll down, I want you to see nothing's going to be cut off anymore. <laughs> so there we go. We can also reduce the padding between these arrows if you want them really close to each other. Again, we'll need to hop into edit mode and it will resize because it's responsive, but we'll select edit content and scrolling down here to size and space. Scrolling down here, we have space between slides. It's already set to small, but if I click these three dots, I can make it even smaller manually. That's gonna pull them really close to each other. So that was edit content. I'll show you one more time here. Edit content, scroll down to size and space, and then we have space between slides, not elements. Space between elements is the space between the title and the description. We want space between slides. Click those three dots over here and then pull it all the way to the side, okay? I'll go ahead and select save and it'll refresh our changes here. And there we go. Now the arrows are super close to each other, pointing from one to the next. So let's talk about the second design style that we have here. I'm going to take this, copy it, and paste it here in our custom CSS. This one is also going to create a clip path, but this polygon is actually going to be pointing down. Then we've added a little bit of padding and we've added a bottom border to the gutter. And I'll show you exactly what that means. Let's scroll back up and take a look. All right. Now we did push everything next to each other. I don't really like that look for this design. So I'm going to select save. Let's hop into edit mode, select edit content, scroll down to size and space, and we'll go ahead and add some more space between the slides. I'll just select, how about medium? There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and select save and it's going to refresh our changes here. It might take a second to load. There we go. Now we've got some space between them. We should have changed one more thing while we're there. Check it out. We scooted everything to the left and made it medium. So it's not going to take up the whole space of the square. We're going to get this whole block over here for this list card and the word September is getting cut off. I don't like that look. So I'm going to go back into edit mode, select edit content, scroll down to size and space, and we'll make that content width full. So the two things we changed here was we made sure the content width was full and we adjusted the space between the slides. Okay. I like the look of this a lot better. I'll go ahead and select save. 
It'll reload, and there we go. So what we've done is we've said take a click path and create the polygon shape here, which is that little pointing downward arrow. Then I added some padding to the bottom. I wanted to make sure that nothing got cut off for the longer uh, descriptions here. There are a few of them that are just a little bit long, like this one at the very end, and I'll show you what happens if we remove that padding bottom. Now that's gonna be really close to the edge of the text, and I didn't like that look, so I gave it a little bit of padding. That's completely optional. And you can also adjust it if you think three is too much, maybe make it one, maybe make it whatever you're comfortable with. That's how we adjust the padding of the individual list cards here so there's some extra space. Now, last but not least, we've got this list items, carousel, gutter, border bottom, 3px, solid FFF. That's this line right here, that's all it is. It's just the line that stretches all the way across the site that all of the list item cards are sitting on top of. We can change this color if you want it to be, uh, let's say red. There we go, or we'll make it a bright yellow. We can make it a bright yellow. We can make it uh, dashed or dotted. Whatever you like to change that border style to, that's creating the line at the bottom underneath those options. So if you don't like the equal height cards that I have here as well, let me show you one last thing. We'll select save, hop into edit mode. It'll reload, there we go. Select edit content and under size and space, instead of this option, select the lower one. That will stretch out the cards so if they have more content, they'll be a little bit taller, but the cards that are smaller will still be shorter and everything will still touch the line. So that's edit content, size and space, scrolling all the way down, we change the position. This will stretch all of them to be the same height. This will push all of them down so they'll still touch that actual line at the bottom, the timeline that we created, but they'll only go up as far as they need to to accommodate the content inside that specific item. All right, however you decide to style that or code it, select save when you're done and you'll be good to go. All righty, that's it for this tutorial. All those codes are listed in the description below, but definitely change up that border for the last one if that's what you're going for. You can adjust the width, the style, the color, whatever you need to do to make sure it suits the style for your own website. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a like and a comment if you did, and definitely subscribe to my channel because I post a brand new tutorial every single week and I wanna make sure you catch the latest. Thanks again for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you're gonna love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I put all of my custom codes and pro tips inside one gigantic PDF available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.